Hey guys, Bones here. Uh, today I want to uh, try and attempt to show you how I do uh, acid etching. I've been uh, using this process a couple of times on various things. This, uh, this I did this for a guy who was uh, reconditioning some guitar cases. Uh, that's obviously brass and aluminium. Then another brass, a Morgan one in brass. So the basic theory is you remove a barrier between uh, the acid and the uh, part you want etching so it, what it entails is it covering the whole area with a barrier to start off with and then removing that so the acid can eat into it it's probably hard to see here but this acid has etched down to probably I don't know maybe half a mil if that so it's a very it's quite a slow process and it's um, it, sometimes it can be a bit hit and miss so if you've got small areas or thin areas like this, sometimes the acid can get under the barrier and round and you don't always get a defined edge. Now this one's uh, actually turned out pretty well, but if you look on the aluminium one, because this is a softer metal, you see the R on there, it's eaten into it a little bit because it's such a fine amount that the, the barrier has been covering. Whereas the brass one is a little harder for the acid to get through. So the R on this one is a little bit more well defined. But that's tiny. I mean, that's what, three, three mil across? If No, well, the R there is probably about two mil. So anyway, the process is pretty simple. We, we have a, a piece of material that we want to etch. And we cover that in a barrier. For the soft metals, uh, brass, aluminium and the... Uh, copper there I use um, ferric chloride now this is at the end it's acid at the end of the day so it's a bit of common sense but it's not one of the really nasty acids um, it comes with the usual blurb don't feed it to your koi carp keep it off your hands so it's just the usual stuff goggles gloves um, I'm a bit health and safety lax in here so <laughs> I probably won't use gloves but uh, anyway you need some of that, you need a squirt of water, a little sanding block that you use at the end to sand off your design, and a brush. And that's probably that. Oh, and a vat, obviously, to put it in. So, I've got a clock here. This is not running at the minute to show you, you know, the whole time span, but um, take a note of that later once I've popped it in here, and you'll see how long it takes for the design to etch through. So, I'll be back in a tick. And uh, we'll show you the design on the uh, PC. Right, so this is the uh, design I want to etch out. It's for a little project I'm doing. So it's going to be the same shape as that Morgan uh, patch. So all I've done is drawn this out on my um, CAD package that came with my laser engraver. I've given it a nice fancy font. And the trick with text, I think, especially when you're doing the smaller plaques, is to use a thicker font. The thinner it is, the less well-defined your line's going to be. So that's the design. So the next stage is to um, clean up and paint a piece of uh, material that you want to use. So the, the piece of material I want to use on the, my plaque for today is this piece of copper. And as you know, when the sheet comes in, it's already got one side with the backing. So that's good enough for a barrier for the ferric chloride. But what we want to do is want to prep this area and get all the uh, the crap off the front. So to do that, I just use a sanding block with quite a rough grain. clean off all the uh, crud that's on there don't know what that is something pretty tough so we'll get that off there <clears throat> and all this does is gives it a good good keyway for the paint 
when I spray paint it. So I just use normal meths. I've got this uh, camera stuck to a, a mount on a cap, so I'm not sure really how good it is for you guys watching, whether it's giving you motion sickness. I'm trying to keep my head still as uh, much as I can. It's all new to me, this YouTube malarkey. It's just a bit of fun, but uh, let me know below if the uh, if the head cam is too uh, is too um, rocky and unwatchable. So that's that cleaned off. Now what I need to do is uh, just give it a spray. So I'll be back in a tick once that's sprayed up. All the edges are done, so I can start the design. Uh, right, so folks, what we need to do now is make sure that this design, when it's transferred over to the uh, laser engraver or cutter, is going to engrave the correct area. So what I need to do is simu simulate the design I've got there, and I'll go through the process of simulating where it's going to engrave. Now, this is wrong because it wanted to engrave in the... Um, the outer edge and the wording but I want the, to transpose that to have the time machine wording standing proud and this section here to be uh, etched so all I need to do on my software here is change that line to a cut line so now the machine wants to engrave everything that's in black And at the end of the cycle it will do the oval as a cut line so when I come to cut the uh, piece of copper on the bandsaw I've got a guideline fingers crossed so that's so that's good now I'm happy with that I'll send that over to the machine and uh, we'll start to uh, we'll start to engrave the design so this is the piece of copper you saw earlier. I've just all I've done is just sprayed it with matte black pen. That's all it is. I'm not too bothered about the edges, but uh, so I'll pop that in the machine. Now this is a large machine. It's quite expensive, but you can see uh, smaller machines on eBay for quite reasonable prices. So if you're wanting to get into acid etching, I don't think the actual price of getting into it per se is uh, going to be too pricey so it's uh, worth looking at some machines on eBay and uh, seeing if you can get uh, started at a reasonable cost so what I've done is I've just placed that there and I'll give it a test make sure it's in the correct area and it pretty much is so I won't run through all this engraving but uh, we'll start the cycle off <coughs> What I usually do is I give this, give it two runs through. As you can see, it's taking the fur, um, it's taking the paint off quite easily, but just to give it a another blast, so to speak, to get all the paint residue out of the way, I give it another run. So in a minute, you should hopefully see the uh, text come through. Fingers crossed. So at this stage now when the text physically starts coming through you get a good idea of the metal that's going to be left once you've uh, acid etched. Now this may be a bit of a tricky font because you can see those tiny little swirls in the centre. They're, they're quite tiny so we may have problems with those later on. It may not etch quite as neat as, uh, as I'd like. So you remember what I said about um, trying to get a thicker font when you do especially when you're doing smaller stuff like this so 
so that outer edge now hopefully should uh, do a cut line and leave me with a line to cut to on my uh, bandsaw there you go folks Right, I'm going to give it a second blast now. I won't film this bit, but I'll be back in a tick uh, with the clean-up process. See you in a minute. Right then, folks, that's come out quite nice, actually. Uh, hopeful to get a good uh, a good etch out of that. So to clean it up, I just put a bit of squirty on my blue roll. And just gently wipe off the dust that the laser uh, engraving is left behind. So that's all ready now to go in the uh, etching bath. This ferric chloride, it should be at sort of room temperature, it works best when it's a little bit warm. It does go off after a while, well when I say go off it, it loses its, its, loses its uh, potency. Um, I've had this quite a while so it may take a, a little while to, um, to etch. But anyway, let's see. Nice generous glug of that. Uh, let's have a look. We'll set this to 12 and then we... We can see how long it takes to etch. So basically, you plonk it in, and that's it for a little while. So that ferric chloride would start eating into that uh, copper. Um, depending on the hardness of the metal, depends on how long it takes. But we'll come back from time to time, we'll check the time, and as it goes through the process, I just gently brush the uh, area that's been etched so right we'll come back in a couple of hours and see how that's going on cheers folks see you in a bit hi right, folks uh, sorry guys I've uh, missed a, a stage out here I thought I'd pressed uh, record on my thing and it hadn't uh, started recording so I've, all you missed was I lifted the uh, etching out and it's taken roughly about seven hours to get to this stage I've cleaned the top and I've uh, wiped the top with uh, methylated spirits as well. So now we can see a slight, hopefully the camera can pick that up, a slight edge all around the text and the oval there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the top surface and then hopefully we'll be able to dress back with the, the stone, stone, sorry, the sanding block, leaving the top nice and shiny copper and in this section here all black. So that's the theory, so let's see what happens. So I'm just going to turn off the uh, phone for now and uh, when you come back this will all be painted and then I'll try to dress back with the stone. See you in a minute. Right, we're back. So the paint on here is just a thin spray of, uh, it's actually Halford's black. <laughs> so but it's, uh, it's the matte black, so when it dries it um, goes very thin. Obviously the longer you leave that and the deeper that goes the, the more of a thicker paint cut you can get on it but if you put it on too thick anyway as we dress it back now it would want to lift so I've left it quite thin. So anyway right this is the moment of truth. So I use these sanding blocks I get these off Amazon and uh, they're pretty, pretty spot on flat and all we do is hopefully we just start I always go in the same direction
And as you can see, that's uh, coming out quite nicely. The trouble with having a big uh, expanse between the text and the border, for example, is that um, it's quite easy to dip into it with the, uh, the pad. A bit on this edge now look I'm always scared of uh, dipping into the larger expanse of uh, etch if I do cheat a little bit and get that off there so there we go folks look so what I'll do now <coughs> I shall cut that out and then come back with the uh, finished product with it drilled and cut out. Right then folks, so, so you can see it's cut out now and I've drilled the holes for the uh, screws uh, and then it's basically just a bit of a clean up around the edges and uh, a lacquer. So again with a little pad, just give it a little Wipe around the edge, get all the burrs off. And then it's just a simple matter of a quick, see if I can find some, I use some of this uh, Halford's clear lacquer and that just seals in the pen. So I'll just open the door a tad. And this stuff uh, dries pretty quickly and it leaves a nice shine on the uh, finished product so there you go folks a little copper acid in etched plaque if you've got any questions there at all just uh, leave them down below I'll try and answer them like I say in all my videos I'm I'm no expert on it and there's uh, people out there do far better jobs than I do but that's a little introduction and uh, it's acid etch and the way I do things you end up with a nice product that's so I hope you found that helpful or interesting if you did please give us a thumbs up if you didn't give us a thumbs down but uh, if you didn't enjoy it tell me why you didn't enjoy it and uh, I'll try and fix it for next time I say I don't only do these videos for fun it's not uh, it's not a major issue at all but uh, It'd be interesting to know your thoughts on the, the videos. So cheers guys, have fun, ta-da!